Hockey is finally back, so of course we have these two gentlemen joining me now in our studio, Arpin Basu from LNH.com and Sean Gordon from the Globe and Mail. And uh, hey, listen, uh, preseason's over. Not too bad of a record, 4-2-1 and one for the Habs. Uh, what, what are your takeaways from the preseason, guys? What's your most surprising moments or, or players that are standing out to you? Well, my biggest takeaway from the preseason is what was that you know, in years past, there were always questions involving sort of the frontline players. And now all the questions involve the backup goalie, who's going to play on the fourth line. It's all the kind of the fringe guys that are, that are really the biggest question marks on the team, which bodes well for the Canadians going forward because the main players are all in place. Their core right. is in place. There's no questions there. Um, and really, the debates during preseason were really trivial in the grand scheme of things because the, the things that were important are pretty much set in stone. That's good news for the Habs, right? It, to me, yeah, I guess the story is that it's kind of, there's no story here, right? Like, it's yeah. a little uneventful, um, and I think, by and large, that's a good thing. I will say that it's a slightly bad thing in that you kind of expected to see somebody kind of say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm bursting through the door here, a la Brendan Gallagher. Uh, or Alex Galchenyuk a couple Hasn't years PK ago. Hasn't PK done that? I think uh, yeah, well, his preseason's you know, been really good. Yeah, I mean, but he makes nine, seems he, like yeah, we're getting our money's worth. Yeah, but almost. he broke but that makes, door down yeah, a long time say, ago. Like, but he makes nine million bucks. Like after whole, that big make, contract, though, right? You got to yeah, come in and play yeah, the way he's playing. Yeah, I suppose. But like, where's you know, where's you know, Yuri Siakatch? I expected to be a little better. I think he's all right. He'll be fine. But he's just one of those third third line kind of. That does go back to my point. And you talk about Brendan Gallagher, even Michael Bourneval. In the past, there was room for guys like this to break through the door I in suppose. the preseason, yeah. and there just isn't anymore. Yeah, fair mm -hmm. enough. Okay, well, uh, speaking of surprises, Peter Budai being traded. What do you guys think about that? Not a surprise. Yeah. Not a yeah. surprise. Not I figured the minute the minute that, and of course, everyone will say this now, right? But I, I actually did say at the time when when they went to Dustin Tokarski in the playoffs, I'm like, oh, this guy can't stay. Like. The, can't do that. Right? Yeah. You can't say you're the backup for the regular season, and yeah, you're Carey Price's buddy, but yeah, sorry, we're not going to go to you in a, in a crucial playoff game. So it seems to me that any self-respecting athlete is going to do what Peter Budai did and didn't confirm until he actually got traded. You know what? Get me out of here. And that's that's actually the I, I wouldn't say surprise because Peter Budai has always acted as a professional, as a really class guy. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that it did not come out at all from all the way back in May until the time he got traded that he had actually asked for a trade. Uh, is really a compliment to him and the way he handles things because it could have become a, just a total mess and all can't be like Peter Budai, when's he going to get traded, when's he going to get traded. Because he kept his mouth shut, uh, it was able to get done in an efficient way. Um, well, well, let's see, let's take a look at who we're getting for Budai. Eric Tangretti. Big, big body, but is he really going to do anything for us? I would be very surprised if he plays more than a handful of games for the Montreal Canadiens yeah. this year. I, he's a decent, he's a decent fourth line player. Uh, he's not bereft of skill. Uh, he's a former second round pick, I believe. He was a yeah. fairly high pick, um, and he's a big kid, uh, 25 years old. But he, you know, he's not, he's not going to really contribute much offense. And I think we're back to what Arpin was saying. I think that people are arguing about fringe players as if they matter, which I'm afraid to say they really don't. I mean, no. these are guys who are going to play. You know, at best, nine, ten minutes a game, uh, maybe kill some penalties and so forth. He, he's not a player who will hurt them. I think he maybe makes other people a little bit more expendable, uh, like Travis Moen. But you know what? I, I'd be surprised if that's if, if he plays, as I say, more than a handful. And Francis Bouillon's release uh, also kind of uneventful, I think, for the team. Well, not really a surprise. It's, you know, I mean. I think he was brought in as an insurance policy in case one of the kids wasn't ready to yeah. take the next step. And I think one of the kids would have had to really fall flat on his face and almost break his face on that fall for Francis Bouillon to get right. a contract with the Canadians. But, you know, they gave him the courtesy to come in on a tryout. They let him stay till the end of camp. Uh, but, you know, the writing was on the wall. Even the way he played in the preseason, you could see that uh, the game has passed him by to a certain extent at his age. Okay, so speaking of the kids then, uh, or maybe or maybe not, with the veterans as well, who and, or what are you keeping an eye on as uh, we kick off the season? Alex Galchenyuk. Alex Galchenyuk is the guy who will, let's not get too hyperbolic here, is going to make or break the team, but it, a lot a lot goes through Alex Galchenyuk on this, uh, on this team now offensively. It could offensively. be the difference between an elite team and a very good team. Exactly. I mean, that's, exactly. that's what the difference exactly. he could make. And I think, I, think we're, you know, I think we're both probably looking at what can this guy do with a really like a, a, a frontline featured role, power play time regularly, um, playing second line, top line minutes. This is a guy, this is his time is now. And I think that he's a guy who could put up huge numbers of points. He could contend for the scoring lead of the team. It's going to be an exciting season. Uh, we can't wait. And uh, lots, uh, lots to look forward to, it looks like, uh, with the Habs. We'll see you guys next time. To be continued. <laughs>